Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome back to the Fantasy 420, where today we are going to be returning to the gridiron and discussing some 2019 running back free agency winners. I'm obviously not feeling very well. I had to restart this a few times because of coughing, so I hope I don't have to do that for this one, and I do have a water bottle, so in case I have to stop and drink that, I do apologize, but I do want to do a daily video for you, so... Today we're going to be discussing five running backs who benefited most from this crazily active free agency period in the NFL offseason. Obviously there's still the NFL draft, preseason games, injuries, roles can be given out and taken away, etc. But if we just take free agency into account, there do seem to be some clear winners. So starting from number five on the list and finishing with number one, Number one is going to be the most helped and biggest winner of the free agency offseason. Number five on the list was still helped a tremendous amount. It's just I believe that number one was helped the most. So, excuse me. We're going to go ahead and start our list with number five, who I believe is Christian McCaffrey. Last year we had a little bit of a concern with C.J. Anderson being signed, being the bigger body stealing McCaffrey's red zone carries and touchdowns, but now he's going to be carry on Johnson's problem in Detroit, so we'll touch that when we get there. But um, I believe McCaffrey legitimately needs to be in talks for the overall number one pick. The Carolina Panthers might draft a backup running back, and I actually expect them to do so, but their current one is Elijah Hood, which I don't think would strike fear into the hearts of many for Christian McCaffrey's workload. Uh, they haven't gotten out of the wild card in playoffs for three seasons after their Super Bowl devastating loss to Denver. And then I think Ron Rivera might be on the hot seat. And if he is on the hot seat, especially if the Panthers start out poorly, they're going to be just giving the ball to their best player, who happens to be Christian McCaffrey without a doubt. They lost Funchess in the offseason. Greg Olson is a shadow of what he used to be when he's on the field if he's not injured. Uh, Cam is an inconsistent thrower. I just think that McCaffrey has now risen to their franchise player without a doubt, and he could lead the NFL in touches. I also think that it doesn't matter what their win-loss record is. He's just going to be immune and protected from that, and he's going to be one of the best chances to score big points every single week with those receptions, big plays, and roll on his team. So I just believe Christian McCaffrey, with the team not investing in a high-end backup, I would just go ahead and go all in with him this year, and I'm probably going to have a decent amount of stock if I get some early picks. Number four name I'm going to say is the uh, Sony PlayStation Michelle. I really loved him going into last year. Patriots spending a number one round pick on a running back is really rare. And then I love him even more going into this year. Like I mentioned in the quarterback losers video, which I will link after this along with some of my NFL offseason videos, I do expect the Pats to run more this year. Obviously Gronkowski's gone. Josh Gordon didn't work out. Brady's another year older coming off of his highest interception total in a few years. Their biggest offseason move was Michael Bennett, a defensive player. So I do think they're going to be more of a run, play defense, counterculture team, just like the Super Bowl with the 13-3 win, be more surgical with Brady and Belichick and just calling more run plays and pounding it and just being more efficient and not airing it out. So the division is also awful. The Patriots are the only, for sure, I would say, good team. I would say the Jets have a good chance to make some noise, maybe even win that division. But I would say the other two teams are pretty far away. I would still expect the Pats to win. And if that comes to fruition and they are that run-first defensive team, the sky is really the limit with Michelle uh, or a pa Patriots running back in general. Just think of... Garrett Blount's 2016 when he had 18 touchdowns. If you're a runner and you're the number one runner for that Patriots team, yes, James White will take away some in the receiving game, but 
he's just going to be pounding those red zone carries, and I just love the talent too. So really buy into Sony Michelle this year. The next name I'm going to say who was really helped in the offseason was James Conner. This one's pretty easy to deduce. Le'Veon Bell is gone. You don't have uh, the weekly annoyance of when is Le'Veon Bell coming back and the team having to be not sure what to say and uh, so in discord in the locker room. Obviously, Antonio Brown is also gone, so the players who are still remaining on the team should see an increased workload. Now, I guess I'll just have to say, why is he only at three? I would just say uh, he hasn't really done it uh, as often as the number one player. Uh, he did kind of broke, break down and was less effective at the end of last year, so maybe uh, we need to see if he can make it through a whole season. And also, strides were taken in the division, and I am sort of scared of Pittsburgh in general. So uh, I think the next two teams have a little the next two players on teams that we talk about have a little bit higher prospects going into the season than Pittsburgh. So the second name I'm going to mention is Damian Williams, just like with uh, James Conner. Uh, there's obviously no Kareem Hunt to worry about. I do think this is a very polarizing pick. A lot of people are higher on Carlos Hyde than I am, and a lot of people think of Williams as more of a receiving back. So it's more of a do you believe option, and I do believe. Um, Hyde has always disappointed. Williams, I believe, should start for sure and get receptions in what should be a high-volume throwing offense, especially if Hyde comes in and disappoints like I expect him to. They're just going to throw the ball even more. He also has more big play ability, which is obviously really nice in fantasy football. The Tyreek suspension does factor into this, and like I mentioned, I do expect him even if he's not found guilty of anything, to receive probably a suspension for the personal conduct. So I do think he'll be suspended for the early part of the season next year. And the only chief that I would really buy into as receiving an upgrade from that is Damian Williams. Just more receptions. They have to lean on him a lot more. Watkins is off injured. They're going to double Kelsey every single play. I would just buy in more. Um, Holmes is hurt by that. So I just buy more into Damian Williams, and by the end of the season, if Tyreek comes back, that's a if too. Uh, the Chiefs dropped Kareem Hunt with uh, those battery assault issues. If Tyreek Hill is dropped, obviously we move Damian Williams up a massive amount. But if Tyreek comes back by the end of the season, which I would expect him to, they can't really afford to lose Hunt and Tyreek that much talent, then uh, he'll have his role already. So... I like Damian Williams this offseason, and I think the number one name that was helped the most was Le'Veon Bell. There's going to be no more drama. Like Mary J. Blige says, um, he got his money, and he should be really happy. He's going to be their franchise player without a doubt, and he's just going to be fed. Uh, he went away from Pittsburgh because he didn't want to be fed, you know, 400 touches or whatever in a season, but I think he's going to just get that anyway because they're just going to pound him the ball. I expect them to be a vastly improved team, and they're going to be contending at the end of the year this year. So it's really an awful division, like I mentioned, besides the Patriots being the only team I think that we could project right now to be really good. And even then, that might not even come to occurrence, and they could fall off a little bit. So who knows? They could win the division. And Darnold is also a young quarterback, so he's going to have to check down a little bit. And also, he's going to want to build chemistry with Le'Veon Bell more than uh, some of the other players. So, since he just got in, and he's going to want to get on his good side. So, I would like you guys to tell me where I went wrong. Those are my five names. I'm about to cough right now. So, uh, talk to you tomorrow, guys. Bye.